go over the different water quality tests. Go ahead and fill in your chart while we go through the different tests. The first test is temperature, and it's obviously the temperature of the water. Um, the impacts for aquatic species is really um, different species have a different range of tolerance for different temperatures. The other thing is about dissolved oxygen, so warmer water holds less dissolved oxygen. There's no human impact for temperature on drinking water. We drink hot water, we drink cold water, so there's nothing that uh, is significant for, for humans as far as temperature goes. Now temperature can tell us um, some factors when we combine them with other water quality tests. Go ahead and pause the video as you need to, to finish writing answers whenever you need to. The next water quality test is pH. So pH you've learned from other science classes. It's the level of hydrogen or um, OH ions in the water. And so other, you've heard this before, range of tolerance. So species have a range of tolerance for pH. pH decreases in the water with more carbon dioxide um, because carbon dioxide dissolves into the water either from respiration or decomposition or um, from the atmosphere too. Sorry, I should have put that down. So add this. It's from respiration, decomposition, comma, from dissolving in from the atmosphere. And then it turns into carbonic acid. And so carbonic acid lowers the pH. So when you have more carbon dioxide, it lowers the pH. Um, and conversely, pH rises with more photosynthesis because then you, with photosynthesis, you have less carbon dioxide, which is going to reduce the amount of carbonic acid, which will then make the pH go up. This is a common APCAS kind of question, so keep the stuff straight in your head. Oh, and I just saw here dissolving into water, and you should put from the atmosphere for this one. For human drinking water, the ranges are from 6.85 to about 8.5 is normal and fine for human um, drinking water. Dissolved oxygen. Um, Obviously, the level of, of oxygen that's in the water. Aquatic species, you can see a picture here of gills. They, the water goes through their gills and captures dissolved oxygen. So um, living things need oxygen. Consumers need oxygen to survive. So most aquatic species need above three to four parts per million, which is equivalent to milligrams per liter. So these are equivalencies. Um, but there are some that are adapted to lower dissolved oxygen levels, but m the vast majority need above that. Um, for drinking water, there's really no impact. We don't, um, it's not a water quality standard for human drinking water. Turbidity. So <clears throat> what turbidity is, is suspended solids. So you need to know that word, suspended solids how murky the water looks. You can see this one here. People say, oh, it looks muddy. Um, these are suspended solids. Um, they can clog the gills of fish. They can lead to death. Some species, like catfish, are adapted to muddy water, murky water, um, high turbidity. So for humans, we do have a drinking water standard in our Safe Drinking Water Act. It needs to go down because pathogens, so harmful bacteria and viruses and protozoa, can hide in and around the suspended sediments or solids. So they, it has to be reduced. So what we do is we put a flocking agent like alum, which makes the pieces clump together, and then we can let those clumped together pieces settle out in a, in a water treatment plant. Macroinvertebrates. So this is somebody who has collected um, macrovertebrates, which are little tiny insects. Um, macro means that you can see them with the naked eye. Micro means you can't. So you have to have a, a stereoscope or a microscope. 
but macro means bigger, so insects, worms, etc. And what they tell us is the level of pollution. They don't tell us necessarily what pollution it is, but there are some species like worms that are fine with lots of pollution and other species die off. Um, so whatever is in the water, the species, so identifying the species of macrovertebrates tell us how clean or dirty the water is in terms of pollution. Um, human drinking water doesn't have macroinvertebrates um, because they're all killed off in the process of treating the drinking water for tap water. Um, but pre-treatment, so our water that's coming from a, a lake or a river, we monitor macroinvertebrates because they're an indicator of other pollution. But they're not in our tap water. Coliform bacteria um, comes from human poop or other mammal poop. So sometimes we call it coliform bacteria, sometimes we call it fecal coliform bacteria. A, a, a well-known example is E. coli. So coli comes from coliform. Now, aquatic species are kind of used to coliform bacteria. So if you get a sample of water from a lake or the ocean and it has them in there, it doesn't mean it's going to kill off fish or whatever. They're adapted to it. But the biggest problem is for human health. It's very dangerous. The drinking water standard from the Safe Drinking Water Act is no bacteria, no coliform bacteria, like at all. You can't have it at all in the water, not even in a small amount. So our water treatment plants kill all living things in the water, including coliform bacteria. Um, and macroinvertebrates or anything that's in the water, they kill it through either chlorine or ozone or UV light. So those are the three main ways that we kill coliform bacteria. In Santa Clarita, we kill it through um, ozone. Nitrates. So Nitrates tell us the level of nitrates. Now the nitrates could come from fertilizer runoff, feedlot runoff, sewage spills. Here's a sewage spill going out somewhere, um, either in surface. Um, it can come from groundwater too. So people who their drinking water comes from well water, either um, out in rural areas or in some cities. Like actually in Santa Clarita, half of our drinking water comes from Castaic Lake. Half of it comes from underground, groundwater. There's actually a huge aquifer um, under our river and under um, the Saugus area. And so um, fertilizers that soak into the ground can get into groundwater. Aquatic species can tolerate high levels of nitrates um, than ammonia. So ammonia is really what comes out from like fish poop or um, decomposition and then nitrifying bacteria turns it into nitrate. So this is why this is going back to the nitrogen cycle and you learned about nitrification and here it is related back to water pollution. So when things are decomposed or poop, um, ammonia is more common but it's more toxic to fish and other aquatic species, turtles, other things that live in the water. So it's um, really important that a body of water has a healthy population of nitrifying bacteria to change it from ammonia to nitrates because aquatic species can tolerate pretty high levels of nitrates. Not indefinitely, too high of nitrates can be bad, but most of the time, much higher levels of nitrates than ammonia. So nitrates are bad for human health. The drinking water standard from the Safe Drinking Act is uh, drinking water can no, can't have more than 10 parts per million. Um, in smaller amounts, it can cause blue baby syndrome in infants. That's why sometimes they tell you if you're in an area with a lot of farming, they tell you to use bottled water to make baby bottles um, instead of tap water. In Santa Clarita, we whenever we've done these tests from tap water in my lab, Sometimes they're like at three, which is fine, uh, and but most of the time they're at zero. So we hardly ever have nitrates in our drinking water. Heavy metals. Um, so there are different heavy metal tests 
when we do this in lab, um, a cheap heavy metal test is copper, and so you often test for copper. Um, it's more expensive to test for lead um, and mercury, so we usually do copper in the lab. But people that are have older houses where that use that were built with lead pipes, sometimes they'll test their water and see if lead is leaching into their pipes. That's usually older houses that are more than 50 years old or more, um, even longer than that. I'm not quite sure when they phase out lead from water pipes, but um, in Santa Clarita, we don't have big lead problems in our drinking water because we don't have very many lead pipes. Anyway, um, people can get lead tests at um, a hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, and can test their water for lead. But they're more expensive um, tests, so that's why we don't do them in, in class. So heavy metals in the aquatic life, they can harm the re organs, reproductive health, but the, the more we're, we're more concerned here about human drinking water, um, especially for children. The classic example is in Flint, Michigan, where they had huge amounts of lead in their drinking water. It was actually a criminal offense. Um, you can see people protesting against the lead. Um, that was allowed. So the Flint um, officials, the water officials, and even higher up knew about it, and they did not solve the problem. Um, and then it was finally the, the news story broke after lots of kids were going to the pediatrician with serious problems, and a pediatrician figured out what was happening. Um, but again, that's not something that you have to worry about in, in, um, in our city. Okay, so uh, hardness. So what does the hardness test tell us? So it tells us the level of calcium and um, or magnesium in water. Um, the different tests, so in class we usually use one that measures calcium. Um, there's probes that will measure calcium, that will measure magnesium. For aquatic species, they're usually fine. They're adapted to it. They can provide minerals. So our bodies need calcium, our bodies need minerals. So you know, that's not a problem. Um, same for humans. Like if you drink, our, our water is very hard in Santa Clarita. Um, if you drink it, it's actually fine. It gives you calcium and magnesium. But we don't like it because it makes spots on our dishes and builds up deposits. So you can see here that this is white. It's not because it, it's uh, black paint is worn off. That's not it. This is actually calcium buildup. So if you go to your sinks and faucets and you look around the rims, you will see white buildup. Um, and that is from calcium because we have very hard water here in Santa Clarita. The next test is total dissolved solids or conductivity. So um, they are very similar to the other. If you measure conductivity, you can do a very short um, conversion to get total dissolved solids. Some new probes measure both, so they'll do the conversion for you. Um, I have probes in the lab that will me tell me the conductivity and the total dissolved solids. So basically we're concerned about it because it shows everything that's dissolved in the water combined. So you have this number, whether it's salt, calcium, nitrates, metals, anything that's dissolved in the water that you can't necessarily. So it's not turbidity where you have suspended solids that you can see and the water looks murky or muddy. This is stuff that you really can't see in the water. So a, a water, um, you know, a, a lake who has a water quality manager can take the conductivity or TDS test every day and, and the, it should have this range of normal and then if one day there's this huge spike in conductivity, they're like, oh, something new is in the lake. And so then you can go back and do all your other tests, your heavy metals, your nitrates, your salinity. You can do all these other tests to figure out what it is that caused that big spike in dissolved solids. So it, as far as impacts for human drinking water, um, it, it, it kind of depends. So. In our neck of the woods, we have tons of calcium and magnesium, so our total dissolved salt is very high, but that doesn't, that's fine for you. It doesn't hurt you. But if it's other things that are dissolved, it can hurt you. So it really depends on the substance that's dissolved in the water. 
All right, so the next video will go over rivers and water pollution.